I found this other picture, so I'm just gonna. Oh my god. Okay, just kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> my face is like blurred out. Okay, that looked kind of creepy. I looked like I had no eyes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gymnasts on Zoom Drinking Coffee. Today, I am joined by 2018 world bounce beam silver medalist, future UCLA Bruin, and Canadian Olympic hopeful Anna Paterariu. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was like really good. <laughs> okay, good. Because your full name is, is it Anne Marie Paterariu? And then, yeah. so you go by Anna. And then it's, I like how it's pronounced because I mean, it's, I don't feel like it can really be pronounced any other way I don't know Pat that's true I've had oh my gosh when I went to 2019 world cup in uh, Stuttgart um there was like a British presenter and my friend showed me when I came home and he pronounced it for every single event he pronounced it a different way and then on floor my last event after he pronounced my last name he's like difficult to say <laughs> I'm like oh no <laughs> it's not difficult to say I feel like I mean I've screwed up a lot of names in my day but like I don't think it's that difficult especially to come up with a different way to say it for each event that's yeah. that's I feel like that's a feat like that's pretty talented I know, I know. it's like paduary <laughs> like, oh. he's like trying to make the you silent or something I guess so I don't really know um, okay I'll put in a background. Um, okay. It's a pretty go. cute one. Um, okay, I've never done this before. So, uh, okay, how do I? I'm do always this? shocked at how many people haven't done the Zoom background thing. But y'all are gymnasts, so this isn't your day to day type thing. <laughs> That's true. I usually just barely pay attention during Zooms. So, okay. You know what? I found this other picture, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, just kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> my face is like blurred out. Okay, that looked kind of creepy. It looked like I had no eyes. It does look like you have no eyes. <laughs> oh, no. Why doesn't this work? Oh my god. Okay, okay. Um, Do you know really one of like a place? I think that's, that's what I'm trying to find, but I don't know if I do. <laughs> oh my god okay this is kind of weird <laughs> let's see what they wow your eyes are like getting i know they're like completely <laughs> less <out of> and <laughs> less <laughs> okay um, um this looks okay. like a horror movie <laughs> It really does. Okay, I'm so sorry if anyone's <laughs> watching this right now. Let me see if I can find anything from Germany? Question mark? I don't know. Okay, let's see if this will work. <laughs> Why? I okay. don't get it. That's okay. Okay, you know what? Maybe no okay okay let's go no <laughs> let's just go no i swear it's like such a fun concept and idea but then in practice like we talked to um usa's yule moldauer the other week and he had the same problem he literally looked he was bad <laughs> it's just like it doesn't work for some reason i don't know if it's like so like behind me i have like a straight up white background so i don't know if that's what it is or if it's the uh, photo maybe Maybe. whatever I pulled this off the internet though so I don't know yeah 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 maybe it just you is that from oh that's from Doha I should have known that Doha I pulled it because obviously this is where you won your world medal so yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of good memories are you drinking anything with me today I do have my tea ah that's great I know. <laughs> what's in your tea what do you, how do you make it it's um so we have like a bunch of dried kind of fruit and leaves and whatever um so that's just like a mix of I don't really know what <laughs> yeah it's like a fruity kind of thing and then I also add in a little bit of a tea bag that's with 
like ginger and lemon and stuff so a little zing to it yeah and did you so you said you had an appointment today wait you're off on Thursdays is that what you said yeah okay so do you drink coffee at all or is it mainly like are you a tea person or what is how do you get your caffeine fix I guess oh I drink coffee not every day just kind of when I feel it and when I don't really have a good night's sleep or if I have a morning training Mm -hmm. um I used to hate coffee and then kind of last year of high school I like extremely needed it (laughs) so I kind of forced myself and then my parents like only drink black coffee so then I think that's why I didn't like it for so long yeah but But then you did you figure out did you discover cream or that kind of stuff like I did did. drink it with black black I, I learned how to drink it with black and like when was it last year I got a pumpkin spice latte for the first time ever um and I just like I couldn't drink the whole thing because I'm not used to sweet yeah like things anymore that's an extreme Uh, like those are two different (laughs) types of that's true that's true that's hard I mean I I can't drink so my husband and I are actually talking about doing um whole 30 have you heard of that um so it's like I think it's very similar to like paleo um diet okay, okay. where it's very like all natural foods it's not necessarily like um a restrictive diet or anything it's just about refocusing your eating efforts and um trying to make sure you eat like whole foods and fruits and vegetables and protein and stuff versus like a bunch of added sugars and things like that um which I have a problem with like I was eating some sour gum worms for breakfast this morning so nice. but um <laughs> But yeah, so with that, you can't like have cream and stuff in your coffees because cream has, you know, well, you basically cut out dairy for like 30 days because they say, I've actually read a lot of research that says basically dairy, um, humans aren't necessarily meant to have dairy or at least in the capacity that we do consume it. Um, So basically they say a lot of humans are lactose intolerant. So it's good to cut it out for a little bit and basically reintroduce it um, in segments and see if you actually are lactose intolerant. Or like I have some flux and stuff and everything. And it's just like kind of figuring that out. But I don't know how, I don't know when we're going to start it, but I'm just like, I don't know how I'm going to live without cream. Like this coffee has <laughs> cream in it. And then I have like one pump of like Starbucks, like classic syrup in it that right. just like gets a little bit of sweet because I can't have very sweet. But, um, but yeah, I can't, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to drink black coffee, but I have to drink <laughs> coffee or else I don't know. I mean, I like tea. Tea's very good. It's just, <laughs> if I don't have like two or three cups of coffee, then my day is not, it's going to be bad. Got it. See, <laughs> I nap a lot. So that's why. <laughs> Pardon? I've started uh, napping a lot as well. Yeah. I know it's only the these recent years like when I was little I hated napping I oh my god would do anything in my power to avoid it but now everywhere we go I think I have like a thousand sleeping pictures of me because (laughs) I like nap so that I could actually have all the energy that I do yeah well I've noticed that that's really important as well I feel like as you get older like I think this week I've napped almost every day. I didn't nap yesterday, but I took, I took like two hour naps on Monday and Tuesday. (laughs) Those are good. (laughs) You feel like you're not being productive, but apparently it's very good for you. And it's very good. If it's not too long, then I feel so refreshed afterwards. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's so funny because I feel like when we're kids, like, did you in pre-K or kindergarten, did you have like your nap time where you had like your little pad that you laid out and stuff and like yep. want to go to sleep no <laughs> I don't know how often I actually went to sleep during that I was but. such an energetic child like when I was uh and I had a babysitter mm-hmm. and she had like a bunch of other children as well um and when it was not time for them she knew I wouldn't sleep so she always took me out into her garden and just fed me food <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I had that babysitter. <laughs> like, what? What did she? I probably was the favorite one, but. Did she feed you like healthy stuff or was she feeding you like under the table brownies and stuff? The only things I remember, she had tomatoes that were really sweet 
um so she always gave me tomatoes and then she always made me hot dogs for some reason those are the two foods I remember I don't remember anything else <laughs> well I mean hot dogs are really good and also as a kid I, I mean I guess for some families kids lifebloods are hot dogs and then for others like it's <laughs> rarity I have cousins yeah, sure. that have never or at least maybe they have since we've grown up but last time I checked they had never had McDonald's or anything like that and um I mean it's not the healthiest food in the world but I don't know have you never had what McDonald's <laughs> oh I no I I used to um I had a friend who always drove me um from elementary school to training when I was like seven eight years old and they always brought me happy meals every single time <laughs> and it was so funny I remember now I used to hate McDonald's fries mm -hmm. I'm like I look back and I was what kind of child were you <laughs> who only ate nuggets you didn't have anyways. any you hated the fries do, do yeah. you have the fries now I love fries <laughs> I love I'm like not a picky eater at all I will eat anything so. <laughs> that's awesome yeah the fries uh mcdonald's fries are my weakness they're so good <laughs> so addicting i love when i hate it well i have i i, hate, I don't want to admit it but i definitely have a the mcdonald's app on my phone and like i get like the little notifications that it's like one dollar friday and you can go get like a large rival <laughs> really i don't know if we have that we probably should. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to McDonald's anymore. But. Well, I mean, if you have, if you ever have a craving and you just download the app, they have like all these deals. I don't know if they have that in Canada, but I would assume so. Like McDonald's isn't stingy, like some yeah, restaurants and stuff. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about what have you been up to besides getting your Instagram hacked? <laughs> <laughs> besides that which I feel like some people are probably like still like this isn't the verified Anna like I know. I'm not gonna follow her which I mean first tell me about that like what went down with that and then let's talk about like what you've been up to like after <laughs> okay um well it was so weird because I got back from gym and I went through my emails and I got an email saying that um my account was being reported for violating copyrights or something like that so um it was like click here to verify your account mm -hmm. like not like the verification but to make sure it's me yeah like, okay like this sounds pretty legitimate so i went to verify my account and then right after that um i said i got another email saying that i got a login from i think it was chicago mm -hmm. i was like oh my gosh and then right after that it said my password has been reset and I was like, what the heck? So I went right away and I reset my password as well. And then a few minutes later, I got another login from New Jersey. And then it was the same email again with my password being reset. I was like, what the heck is going on? I just like kept getting these kinds of emails. And then when I tried to reset my password again, um, it was asking me for like my email or phone number to like get a link or whatever. And then whenever I would type it in, um, it would say user not found. And I'm like, um, okay. Uh, so I think as soon as they kind of hacked into my account, they got rid of my email and phone number. So mm -hmm. that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was, com so I was completely like logged out of it. And yeah. I asked some friends to keep a lookout if they'll post anything weird or send any weird messages. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem like they did, but all I know is that they got rid of my bio and then made my account private. And I tried to get a few people to put it on their stories, but uh, I still got a lot of questions saying like, is this actually you? Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I love the post that you posted where it was just like, here's proof that I am, <laughs> this is me, okay? <laughs> Nobody else can post this stuff. I was like, since I get to research fresh, why not show people my actual personality? So then I just posted a bunch of random things that are like me. Because yeah. I feel like people are still scared of me or whatever, just because of, I don't know, because I was verified before. But yeah. Do you think, I mean, does, I mean, the verification might not matter at all to you, but do you think you'll ever get that back or whatever? Or like, is it just like, eh, whatever, I don't care? Um, 
at this point, I really don't care. Gymnastics Canada did reach out to me as soon as they found out I was hacked and we're like, we'll try to get back your verification. But I yep. feel like I need to uh, have some requirements down and I don't know if I can get verified with like a thousand followers. So. <laughs> Hopefully, um, not that our show reaches a million people, but hopefully people will be like, oh yes, there's a new, I'll pop it up. This is Anna's new account. Please follow her. The other one, not kosher anymore. So thank you. I try to get people to report it and I tried reporting it a thousand times, but I think because it's verified, Instagram's like, what are you reporting this for? So. That's just so, oh, that's so frustrating, mainly because yeah. it's just like, you have like so many memories and photos on that yeah and it's like well at least it's not like your phone or anything but it's still and then of course you did have I don't know how many followers but obviously you had a big following and stuff and it's like now I mean at least you have like I would say if people don't know at least you have like a very like um niche following where it's like a lot of gymnasts and like yeah who know you so it's it's nice and that's true that's true I don't really have any like creepy people following me yet (laughs) (laughs) that Instagram undoubtedly can never get rid of no matter how hard you try Um, basically let's talk about like what you've been up to so obviously you placed I'm going to go back to 2020 because obviously it's been the year from crazy and (laughs) we'll go through that so in 2020 you placed first at Elite Canada, and then you were supposed to compete in Stuttgart and Birmingham um, before they were canceled because of COVID. And of course, in 2019, um, you got silver in Stuttgart um, at the, that World Cup. Um, <clears throat> so those got canceled. And then this past summer, you were, it seemed like you were all ready to go to UCLA. And then I think, I think you posted in August on your other account um, that it was your last time like in Canadian waters for a while. Yeah. And about a month later, you announced that you were deferring because of just restrictions and pursuing the Olympics, obviously, and stuff like that. And then I believe at some point um, in the past few months, you've been nursing an injury, maybe. Um, it's been kind of hard to tell with like your new accounts and everything but um and then we get to today and then I don't believe you competed in elite Canada 2021 did you I was looking for routines and I didn't see it um but it's kind of hard to tell with the virtual competitions who all I know stuff. so what has this I mean it's been a lot what has this past year been like and I mean how are you feeling now as far as you know rehabbing and I mean what yeah, like where you are with gym and everything and training and all that. Um, well, it's definitely been a hectic year. Um, I really kind of started off um, 2020, I guess, pretty strong with that beam routine. I think at Elite Canada, that was probably one of the best beam routines I did in a while. Mm-hmm. But um, getting ready for Stuttgart and Birmingham, my ankle and a lot of other kind of side injuries relating to my ankle due to compensation and whatnot. Um, Those are starting to affect my training a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I would do like a double pike on floor on a crash mat and just like, uh, (laughs) you know, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to compete with like hard landings and whatever. So not going to lie, as soon as I heard that they were canceled, I was a little bit relieved just because how my body was feeling yeah um and then I didn't think that this COVID thing was gonna last a long time so I was like perfect I'll just have like a month or two to kind of slow it down and then um ramp back up for Olympic trials and whatever and then like a few days later Kando was like oh we're not going to the Olympics yeah that was because because for people that don't remember that was when Canada was like the Olympics weren't canceled but Canada was like we're not going yeah yeah I think we were one of the first countries to do that. So um, that kind of really took me by surprise and a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we went into like a two-ish month lockdown. Mm-hmm. Um, and I brought like a floor beam that I would put on the road, but our road is slanted. So it was so hard to do things. Um, and 
I don't even know that lockdown was just such a blur too I feel like it's the same thing over and over again Mm -hmm. and then I was just so happy to be back in the gym I think is beginning of June or end of May or something like that um and then my ankle was feeling better but then as soon as I kind of started doing things again it wasn't better yeah (laughs) and then gymnastics Canada reached out to me and they're like um do you want to get your surgery done now um you know so you can possibly heal it faster and not have to deal with all the pain and whatnot and I was like you know what I think that's a good idea um like it's been restricting my training for a long time now and I'd love to kind of get that resolved um so then I had my surgery in August because in 2018 when I first fractured it um the fractures never actually ended up healing Mm -hmm. so they had to remove the bones that were fractured and since they were avulsion fractures they reattached the ligaments Um, so I was told that it was a pretty rare surgery um and so recovery has been really unpredictable right now um it wasn't doing too well um right after I got out of the boot Mm -hmm. and then I took like quite a bit of time off and a lot of recovery kind of processes and then it got better like really fast so yeah. then I started getting ready for Elite Canada just for beam I was going to do a water down beam routine with mm-hmm. uh, just side aerial layout and an easier dismount and then as soon as I kind of started training that and started putting in a few numbers for routines my ankle just couldn't sustain it anymore wow. and I started getting like some nerve pains that were I couldn't really control and that's kind of how it's been for these past few months and I've just been taking a day at a time and doing whatever I can to heal it up but I don't really know what's going on with it at the moment yeah so I mean I guess I know you said you were talking about recovery when you decided to defer UCLA and then also restrictions and the Olympics, like a lot of things playing into deferring that for a year and just focusing on getting better first off and then also training and and pursuing Tokyo, not giving up on that. Um, But I guess, I mean, that initially when just based off of from the outside looking in on your post about that, it seemed like it was just kind of an off thing and like you were covering, but obviously that has played. Um, did that, did that pay, play a bigger role in you deciding to defer UCLA versus maybe going and training while you were there for Tokyo? Um, see, so I had my mindset on going to UCLA no matter what. Um, I was going to get the surgery done here and then um, get it treated down there. And um, my surgeon said that I think he knew one of the doctors that were done at UCLA so they could have kept in contact and whatnot so I kind of had that part figured out Mm -hmm. but um so we had weekly zoom calls with the team and kind of approaching it um I don't know if you remember but at one point they were saying international students weren't allowed to go to campuses oh yeah yeah I did hear about that there were a bunch of lawsuits and so they kind of got rid of that but then they kept the rule that international freshmen weren't allowed to go to campus Mm -hmm. so because I wasn't allowed to campus um I was like okay what's the point of going um and at that point I didn't really want to do any online classes since I want to go into the sciences and Mm -hmm. those are like pretty Hardish my classes. Like yeah. and I know, and I won't have any motivation probably <laughs> to just stay in my room and do it. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I guess the best choice is to take it off and have a proper university experience, mm-hmm. hopefully, once this all settles down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Um, so you said that you, you don't really know, I guess, what's going on with the ankle right now, but like, what's the prognosis? I mean, are you, thinking that you know you're going to keep pushing towards Tokyo and I mean because that's a big dream but like obviously like if it's hurting you I mean that's it takes away from it and I'm sure it it makes it difficult what's what's the plan with that are you just kind of taking it day by day and trying to heal it and just kind of see what happens I am mostly taking it a day at a time at the moment um 
it would be pretty hard to think about not going to Tokyo since it's been a lifelong dream. But at this point, I do want to put my health first. Mm -hmm. And um, I did, I was kind of training through the pain after the surgery. But then since I didn't have the strength for my skills or whatnot, I just was like splitting the beam and, you know, and I was like, yeah, I don't really want to train like that every single day. So um, I guess taking it day by day, like you said, and even if Tokyo doesn't work, I wouldn't mind having a prolonged elite career that I could potentially train for at UCLA and Mm -hmm. try for 2024. I I don't know. Um, (laughs) Everything's just up in the air right now and we'll see. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I guess with the ankle injury, obviously you're a beam queen as they say it. And like, that's your specialty, but then you also, you do all around. And I mean, is you could also, you know, do some bars. I don't know if bars is, it depends, I guess, with beam specialists, if they like bars as well, but (laughs) um, I mean, you could also do focus on bars or whatever. I mean, I don't know if that's be, that'd be something you're interested in, um, but I guess beam is probably you. You're amazing on beam, so it's. It, I feel like it, that's just a kind of heartbreaking if you like walk to the gym and you can't like really do beam because of your ankle. I know, and I finally, when I was able to train a little bit uh, before Elite Canada, it is probably like my happiest trainings in so long. So I didn't just have to do bars and conditioning and Ah. watch other people do things and I finally felt that sense of accomplishment Mm -hmm. um, that I haven't felt in so so long Um, so yeah and I do like if I go to the Olympics I want to be able to help my team in every aspect possible not just you know is she gonna stick it is her ankle not gonna hold up yeah I I don't know yeah I mean definitely I just it's so difficult nursing those injuries. And then, um, yeah, I mean, you want to be able to deliver for your team and you can deliver on all four apparatus. And obviously this Olympic cycle really favors with the four person teams, all arounders for that. Hopefully things get better and, um, hopefully you can, you know, push through it while also, you know, not pushing through it because it's always Mm -hmm. pain to push through things. And then like, have to deal with that for the rest of your life because Tokyo is one moment and obviously you know pursuing an Olympic medal and stuff is great but then also you have to deal with these injuries and things for the rest of your life and you still want to have a successful NCAA career as well exactly. and I'm sure you want to do beam at UCLA oh yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of UCLA let's talk about that um obviously you seem so from what I gather, you were <clears throat> talking with the team, like you were fully planning up until when did you decide, when did you switch gears between obviously it's sometime in August to September, when did you switch gears and have to tell Chris and them that you weren't coming? Um, and then, I mean, it seems like that being said that you were basically in contact with the team and basically acting like you were part of the team. I mean, which you are, I would say, um, just from afar, um, throughout the entire summer, like season, preseason and stuff. So when did you make that switch and, and what was that transition kind of like, I guess, were, did you just kind of stop joining those Zooms and I mean, what, how have you been in contact with them and things like that? Um, yeah, so we were in contact a lot throughout the summer and Um, I guess we kind of kept me in the loop until we knew for sure that I won't be able to go to campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that was kind of approaching, which I think was around August, I don't remember the exact day. um, That's when I was kind of talking to the team and we were like, okay, there's not really any other choice but to defer. Yeah. Um, I did talk to Chris about potentially doing online classes, but then I shared him my point of view and he was totally he's like do whatever your heart desires <laughs> so um yeah so then that's when I kind of stopped joining the zoom calls because that's also when girls started going to campus and everything kind of dispersed yeah um but I definitely still stay in contact with the team and text them once in a while especially the freshmen um we send each other a lot of tiktoks so <laughs> 
it's funny to see that we have such a similar sense of humor, which is amazing. Um, because I was talking to Brooklyn like before, and I was like, I'm like super weird. <laughs> like, are they gonna like find me too weird? <laughs> and I was like genuinely scared that yeah. I would I wouldn't like completely fit in, even though even though I know that the team is like amazing and. I kind of realized that throughout the summer, but before I kind of got into contact with anyone, <laughs> I was genuinely concerned. Um, but I'm glad to know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everybody, I feel like, you know what I think TikTok has brought out in the world? A lot of people bag on TikTok. And I will say, I mean, like getting addicted to TikTok and stuff is like, it's tough. Like you, you can find yourself just scrolling for hours. <laughs> but I feel like it's really shown a lot of people that like uh that everybody is a bit weird and everybody has a sense of humor and stuff and it's just like if you're showing it or not That's um, true. and I mean everybody to each their own but uh <laughs> I feel like it does uh make things more comfortable it's totally like in some regards different than Instagram where it's like you know typically a highlight reel I know, I know you are you are breaking that norm with your fun <laughs> fun photo dumps and video <laughs> I just love hold on I want to find this let me pull this up real quick I, I <laughs> loved uh, uh, the which one from this okay so wait hold on let's see my swaggy pictures I loved this one. Wait, can you see it? That one's cute. That one's cute. That one. There we go. <laughs> that was my face. <laughs> That's amazing. I also have a selfie with me in Brooklyn with our bucket hats on. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spider. Spider. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you and you you and Brooklyn with the bucket hats on. That was also pretty funny. <laughs> oh. Um, the freshmen are obsessed with Marvel. Um, so I was like thinking of them when I was posting that picture. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> well, I mean, that'll be really cool once things open up for, you know, California and stuff and you are on campus. Maybe it's a couple years down the line, but like, that'll be really cool. Y'all can go to like Disneyland and the, um, like the new Spider-Man they are opening up like a new Spider-Man world and like Avengers campus. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh it's my cool. gosh. It's really cool. It's like, I think the building looks like in like the Avengers movies where they have like the big like Avengers complex or whatever, where they all hang out with like the big A and stuff like that. Like, I think that's basically that side of the property or like Avengers land or whatever and then there's a Spider-Man ride where you white ride through and like you sling webs and stuff <laughs> that's so, amazing oh my god um, so I'll have to make a plan for that I'm sure that it'll happen <laughs> <laughs> as far as like this UCLA season obviously that's something to talk about because in um season is wrapping up this weekend um for the rest of I think SEC's already done but the rest of um, the divisions for women or the conferences for women and then next weekend will be conference championships and then NCAAs is around the corner. So, I mean, what what have been your thoughts on the team this season? And like, uh, just, yeah, what are your thoughts? And I'm sure you've been following them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I know it's been tough, especially at the beginning. Um, they definitely didn't have as much training as many other teams. And I think Chris said they had, I don't even know, like almost 20 days off yeah. uh, for Christmas, which was like right before the NCAA wow. season started. Mm -hmm. um, but they're such a resilient team and they support each other so much. And Chris talks so highly of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they've been working really hard in the gym and you can see them improve. Like every single meet, they just gain their confidence um their skill level looked a little bit more back to normal yeah and um I know it must be hard um I can't imagine not having that much training and wanting to be amazing like they use like they always are they yeah. still are amazing yeah um, and I think some of them deserved a perfect 10 here and there but 
you know, <laughs> not my not my place to say. Um, and then like Shay's been killing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Marzetta and Mia with all their viral routines, like oh my gosh and I love the way they've just been showing off on floor like their personalities and what they believe in um and their black lives matter suit oh my gosh it's so pretty cutest leo I love that leo Um, I'm gonna turn it into like a like that should be like a met gala ball gown or something (laughs) right (laughs) oh my beautiful (laughs) and like Chris is saying um how much experience the freshmen were able to get this year since um and how like since the elites didn't come right so uh and they've been doing such a good job stepping in and Sarah's Jaeger on bars and that's amazing I know and then Frida's just you know she's always amazing so Mm -hmm. I I could literally go individually for each person and say something about them but that'll take forever um (laughs) what um so you mentioned like Shay and Nia and Mark Zetta and everybody, the viral routines and everything, but which, if you had to pick which floor routine do you like the best this year? I love Shay's. I am, I'm already, like I've watched this so many times, I'm already dancing along whenever I see it. <laughs> so they know, so they know that you're at home when the meets are happening and you're just like, yes. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's great well you're getting <laughs> practice in for the next four years or however long you're there exactly. <laughs> that's awesome um, <laughs> yeah it's such a fun team like I feel like UCLA and I know I read that you the basically only other and you can correct me if I'm wrong but the only other team that you like considered was Stanford and like when you talked when Chris showed up at your gym it was just like I'm going there like no questions asked yeah <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know the vibes were just I read people very well I think that's like one of my hidden talents mm-hmm. if it is I don't know but um when he came to my house so uh he asked my coach if he could come watch me train mm-hmm. um and then my coach like asked me and I was like okay whatever but I don't know at that point I didn't like I knew who UCLA was but I wasn't really into it because I was just focusing on really academic based schools um, that I knew were super popular and for some reason UCLA just wasn't one of them in the back of my mind Um, and then I like I wasn't oh okay all the girls like oh my gosh it's Chris Waller and they're like 10 year olds (laughs) And I'm like, who the heck is Chris? <laughs> so, yeah, I was so clueless. And I was like, I don't even want to go to UCLA. Like, I don't know why he's coming. Yeah. And um, everyone was just fangirling. And then after when he came over, and it was like snowing outside. We had like a blizzard. It was freezing. And he came in this light, like spring jacket. Um <laughs> Anyways, my parents felt so bad. They're like, are you sure you don't want us to give you like a jacket for the yeah. ride home? Um, anyways, and he came and talked to me and my parents and it was such a good talk about what academics would be like, how they would help us for the future, how the team is like. And it was just like everything I wanted in a team and more. Mm-hmm. And right away I was like mom this is the school I'm going to she's like you know you still have Stanford to think about you shouldn't make a decision right away but in the back of my mind I was like "Mm -mm. (laughs) this is it (laughs) and that was so you committed with them in in 2019 right um so when he came and talked to you I'm sure that was maybe a little bit beforehand or maybe it was pretty soon after but did you know about Val retiring um and that he was going to be the head coach I don't think so. Okay. Maybe, maybe I did. I don't know. He came in January of 2019 to my gym. Cause I remember it was right before Elite Canada. Yeah. I think that that was like her final season. I think that she had announced, but I was just curious cause it's um, always interesting how some gymnasts, I mean, obviously like the program as a whole and Chris was going to be there and stuff, but some gymnasts, you know, just like with other teams, like football teams and stuff like that will like, um, consider like head coaching changes and stuff so I was just curious right. <laughs> um, 
Well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just, it's a really cool program. And I love how the, I mean, the Leos alone are stunning, like you mentioned. I and I love how Nora, like, designed the one Leo last year. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. And it's just, it's a very, pro- I feel like UCLA, there are so many great programs in NCAA and stuff, but I feel like UCLA is, like, the epitome of, like, the NCAA experience. Like, that <laughs> kind of, like, you know, people talk about coming from elite. And this is definitely heavily in the U.S., but I feel like it's it's for everyone as well. People come from elite, and they're just like you, college is when you get to kind of like let your hair down and have fun, yeah. and just have a lot more personality. And it's like it's still artistic gymnastics, but it's not so much on the artistic side. It's more about having fun and pop culture and exactly. supporting each other. And um, I like I said, I feel like UCLA, no matter who the coach is um, or what have you, like they always bring the right gymnasts together and create that atmosphere. Um. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> de- Chris definitely puts in a lot of thought, and not just him, um, like the whole team about uh, who would best help the team in personality, not just gymnastics wise and academics and how they present themselves, whether they're a leader or humorous or uh, yeah. graceful, you know? Yeah, so they know how to... there's, there's so many personalities on there, like, um, <clears throat> I don't have, there's just so many personalities, like, I know. <laughs> it's there and think about all day and all the different personalities, which is why for a second, I mean, everybody has those thoughts, but for a second, when you were talking about if you would get along with the freshman because you consider yourself weird, I was just like, there are so many different personalities on that team, <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna fit right in, because that's like the ultimate melting pot right there so many yeah but then also they're all funny like um I love Mark Zetta's like little is it Mark Zetta or Mia Mia who does them I think it's Mark's um the little mini mic moments mic meat moments oh my god I love those (laughs) she's so like little lav mic (laughs) I know she's amazing at presenting those too um Like, she's so funny. And then the one with um, Callie, mm. <laughs> it's so funny how awkward she is. I can't get over it. <laughs> Literally the cutest human being. They're just, I mean, they're, it's really precious and hilarious. And like, I just, I can't get over it either. And I think Mark Zetta has a future in show business after all. Oh my gosh, right? And her singing? Oh, so oh my God. Cold. The talent, it's hilarious because you don't even think it's just for the gymnastics team, but I feel like, I mean, even people before them, like Caitlin and Ping Ping and people like that, like, I feel like QCLA also has a knack for recruiting girls who are just like triple threads, quadruple threads, like all these, they just can do everything (laughs) and different things too, not just in show business, but like, um, I know that you want to go into the sciences and like, you know, STEM and just all these different things. Like it's not, not that anybody else is one dimensional teams or anything, but there's just a lot of variety and talent um, in UCLA. So for the season ahead, you said that um, obviously you're kind of working it's day by day with the ankle and stuff, but if everything worked out ideally and things, and I mean, I, I do think, even versus a month ago, I feel like things are trending towards Tokyo happening, um, even with, you know, World Cup cancellations and stuff like that. Um, Tokyo happening and things working out that way and stuff. So if everything, you know, heals up and obviously you get to pursue your Olympic dream, um, which everyone is rooting for you. Like it's obviously like nobody wants anybody to not be able to <laughs> go for that. Um, what does that look like for you? I know that it, I know that Canada has like essentially like it seems like a virtual competition series that is going on maybe still now. Um, and then there's trials. There's not going to be a lot of opportunity if at all for international assignments, but trials and then the Olympics and I mean what would ideally right now that plan look like for you and then afterwards are you going to take time off and then join UCLA in like the spring or would you go straight to UCLA after Tokyo like what does that all look like um so 
like things are just kind of weird down here because in Nova Scotia where Ellie is um if you go out of the province you have to quarantine for two weeks <laughs> so that's why I think we've kind of been keeping the virtual competitions because missing two weeks of training is a lot um, especially for gymnastics and at this time I don't think many people can afford uh to do that yeah. um and so we do have a virtual competition kind of every month until may mm-hmm. um i want to say and then i think they're going to try and get together at least some people in may um right. maybe just the olympic hopefuls mm-hmm. um and then i don't really know what's happening after that i think they want to send someone if the pan ams are going to happen yeah. and then doha in june mm-hmm. um I don't really know what other competitions we can go to other than those trials and hopefully some camps before the Olympics. Yeah. But that kind of seems like that's it. That's it. What is, um, when are y'all's trials? In May. In or, May. Yeah, I think end, end of May, something like that. Okay. So they're a bit, I mean, I guess that's kind of like U.S. Olympic trials um, are end of June and then like U.S. championships are beginning of June. So they're a bit early. So like the team, I guess if the trials happen, do you know, how does Canada work it? So do they announce the team right after trials or is it like you do trials, maybe like number one finisher or something qualifies and then you have like another camp and the team is officially announced later on? Well, I'm not sure now with Doha being after trials because I know they were going to take um, that competition into consideration as well. Hmm. Um so I don't know if they might wait until after that. And I think Pan Am's is after, is later, right? Not in May. Yeah, <laughs> in June, as far as I can, it's in June. Um, it's supposed to be in Brazil, I believe now. Right, yes, yes. The U.S. backed out of that. Um, and I think if, I know that if um, the Olympic trials process continues as it is, if y'all were to send, um, a team or an individual or something to compete in that all around, then you would get a specialist spot if you finish, I believe, in the top two. Um, yeah. So then there would be like a, a at least a plus one for that. Um, but yeah, there's just not many meetings happening. There really aren't. Um, no. So after Tokyo, obviously Tokyo is like July to August. Um, what would ideally, I mean, like if you when you're thinking about it now. And maybe you haven't thought about it much because obviously, like you said, it's one day at a time, even without your injury, like it's just one day at a time in this COVID world. Um, Would you, you know, start classes at UCLA in the fall or would you wait until the spring and kind of continue, you know, lightly training, maybe take a little time off after Tokyo and then, you know, get back into it and and join the team in January? Um, I think the plan is to go right in the fall. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, I feel like I've been waiting long enough to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and Chris will probably kind of lighten up training mm-hmm. until we really have to ramp up for a season. So yeah. I think they'll know how to really balance us out. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least you get to go straight into it. But then, like you said, Chris will, you're not going to go like super hard or anything. And then it's preseason too. So exactly. All right, prepare yourself. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, what is your current favorite show? Current favorite show, Suits. Suits. Oh, like with Megan yeah. Markle. Did you watch the side note? Did you watch the Megan and Harry interview? Or oh, is that yeah. <laughs> what did you think? I did. It's just, I don't even know. Like on top of the world already been being crazy. It's just like adding even more to that craziness pile. So yeah it's a it's a lot but at least <laughs> having a, a baby girl that's really sweet <laughs> that's true that's true that can be adorable um <clears throat> what is your favorite place that you've traveled while in gymnastics like for a gymnastics meet um either japan or doha or both <laughs> japan is really i haven't been to japan but it looks so beautiful <laughs> it is um what is your favorite song to like practice beam to or perform beam to um 
I, in, in Stuttgart world, um, in the training gym, I made the music people put on ABBA while I was on beam, <laughs> warming up for beam finals. <laughs> so, so you, say ABBA. So you, you like a mom, do you like Mamma Mia, like the movie and stuff? I love Mamma Mia. I grew up with it. So. <laughs> Have you seen it on, um, on like, in theater, have you gone and seen the music? Oh gosh, I wanted to so badly. I think it was last year or two years ago, they came around here in theaters. Oh, I really wish I went. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. I actually went when I was in London on the way back from Doha and I covered that meet. I went like last minute and I loved it. It was amazing. That's, that's um, awesome. I, I highly recommend it. And it's like one of those shows that just keeps playing so if you ever have like a layover in Doha or something the tickets aren't bad and it's really <laughs> awesome to see um who is your favorite like or no who is your gymnastics role model at the moment um I want to say Ellie I went to train with her in December for like about a month and I learned so much from her and she's such a hard worker and so motivating and sweet and funny and like probably the best team leader that Canada could have at the moment <laughs> oh she's just been like she's incredible but I feel like she's been around like a just stronghold for Canada for so long and it, <laughs> it's awesome to see her like you can just see her spirit like you said you have a feeling for people but you can just see her spirit like shine through on like Instagram or whatever she does I feel like <laughs> exactly um one skill you want to compete before you retire that like, and it doesn't have to be like on beam or anything like that, but just one skill that you would like to, to compete before you retire. Um, one skill, I don't know if I'd ever be able to compete it, but double layout, even just to do it. Yeah. Um, if my ankle gets healthy enough, I would love to be able to double layout. <laughs> it's an amazing skill it really is fun to watch <laughs> I mean, even though I feel like it's like simple compared to like what like Simone and people are doing nowadays like it's <laughs> such a classic it is right <laughs> and I love did you see from the friendship and solidarity competition did you see Angelina Melnikova oh my her, gosh, her split jump oh. Out into the split jump oh my god I it was amazing I'm pretty sure didn't Trinity Thomas do that at a competition one year yeah, I think Trinity did do it as well. Um, it's such, it's really cool because I feel like you have to land the double layout perfectly to be able to get the out of it because a lot of people kind of ankle crunch, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, on it. yeah. Um, and it's just so hard to land. And then, but if you do it and then you get into that split jump, like it's so impressive. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, what is your biggest fear? Just in general? Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, you question. I don't even know. Well, Cause like I used to hate spiders, but now I don't know why. I hate big ones, but like, I don't have such a big fear of them anymore. And then like, I want to go skydiving. So I don't really know. Heights is like my not really a problem. Yeah, you know, I think splitting the beam is one of my biggest fears because in 2019, I split it. So I hit the beam on layout, layout twice in like a week. And so now I have like a permanent like indent dash bump on my leg. And and then when I was like trying to get ready for Lee Canada, I did a switch ring and I slid down the beam and I hit that leg again. And my coach was like, is it the same leg? And I was like, yeah. But thankfully, oh. it was just a bruise, like, right underneath that bump. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so <laughs> that's I don't really know it in life in general, though. Yeah. Do y'all have cockroaches in Canada? We do. I like bugs. Is that weird? <laughs> I, I told you I'm weird. So I no, love that's bugs. Not, you, might, you might love down here in Georgia. I don't know about up there, but... Uh, and I'm in, in Georgia, like I was saying, um, we have a ladybug problem right now that's been going on. And I literally live in like a ladybug, it's sad, a ladybug graveyard. It's, um, they just like get inside. And it's like one thing, you know, when you first see a ladybug, you'll be like, oh, I'll take it outside. But then there's so many that I can't, I can't save them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I know I was such a kind child whenever it was raining outside and I'd be walking to the bus stop I'd take the worms from the sidewalk and put them in the grass oh my god like that's how bad I felt for them that's so sweet anyway (laughs) oh yeah I just I would like hate when like you almost like step on I I saw a spider the other day and like I feel like some people have the tendency to just like stomp it and I was just like it was outside and I was just like I'm just gonna let it go like let the spider live (laughs) But yeah, I'm not a big bug fan. Um, ladybugs are fine. Um, obviously, I have to deal with them. Um, but cockroaches are like my, I can't deal with cockroaches. I, I just hate mosquitoes. Like I could go camping 24-7 if it weren't for the mosquitoes. Oh yeah, mosquitoes, they are a problem down here, <laughs> um, especially with the heat. When we have like 100 oh, degree okay. day, it's really bad. Is um, it really warm down there right now? It actually, today is probably the warmest day of the year. I think today the high is um, 78. Um, okay. and I'm actually wearing shorts for like the first time since um, maybe like September or October. So nice, um, nice. But yes, it is very warm um, and it's probably not going to get cold very much again. I think we ha- it was like 30 degrees like last week at some point. But once it hits this point in the spring, it's not going down again until like November it's hot yeah 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 (laughs) nice I love that and it's super smoky right now like literally when you look at our um weather forecast right now it's like smoke and we don't know where the smoke comes from (laughs) it just started like a couple of days ago and it's like I look outside right now and it's like just smoking it's just weird and it smells bad and like it's just yeah 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 we live right next to um like a military fort my dad's military and um I'm just like maybe they're just like blowing stuff up and it's causing a problem (laughs) which it's not it's not uncommon for us to hear like basically bombs going off and stuff like in the distance for their um tests and all of that (laughs) it's just like I wish it wasn't (laughs) smoky so bad like go outside and it's like warning for people with bad immune systems and I'm just like oh my gosh um but yeah it is nice to have warm outside so yeah uh, nice to put on like some shorts and not be freezing um okay going back to that (laughs) favorite non-gym activity amusement parks oh amusement parks are fun have you ever been to Disney World I, I went when I was like six years old, so I don't remember anything. <laughs> we went um, during COVID, um, actually in December, masked up like the entire time and everything, but it was a lot of fun, um, especially with like the park being at like 20 or 30 capacity, capacity <laughs> yeah. and like minimal lines and things like that. And like, they were so efficient with like um, everything and they have like barriers on all the rides and everything it was a lot of fun yeah. um, but I, I recommend going in as, as an adult like it's a totally different yeah. experience and like sure. remember it of course oh yeah <laughs> uh, what is a hidden talent a hidden talent um I'm pretty good at piano and drawing my mom is like I think three quarters of the paintings in our house are made by her so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So like, it's just very artistic family. What? Uh, <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Maybe it's just you and your mom. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just us. <laughs> what, um, what's like, what do you like to play on the piano? Do you like to do like Bridgerton? I don't know if you watch that, but like Bridgerton, like vibes with like modern music on piano or do you like classical stuff? I, I'm a classical gal. Um, I did... Yeah, I took piano lessons until I was only like 10 years old because that's when I started turning 30 hours a week. Um, Mm -hmm. So it got a little bit hard. But (laughs) um, over quarantine, especially, I started playing a lot. Mm -hmm. And I find these like Italian classical songs that are like pretty popular or anything that kind of has a piano background. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to, I've actually self taught myself like a couple of songs. Like I'm not even gonna sit here and be like oh yes I am a piano aficionado but it's really fun to play piano like I feel like it's very relaxing and things like that right it is like a stress reliever for me Mm -hmm. yeah so it's nice to hear that you you know did that turn quarantine I'm sure that it's like that was something to get your mind off of 
it was just a hard time for everyone. So different things to get our minds off of. Things. For sure, for sure. Oh, yes, look at that flexible bridge. I love the yellow guitar. It's so bright. <laughs> it was one of my dance costumes. <laughs> I had a little matching skirt with it. Oh my gosh, that was like the shortest little floor routine I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure um, this was like a recreational. Um... A recreational meet? Yeah. Okay, we'll just watch this too because this is like. This is almost 10 years before you won world silver. And this That's is true. two years after little recreation for me. <laughs> I'm still like smiling on beam. Your little love pigtails. That's so cute. <laughs> or maybe I hated girl. ponytails well, as a child. I hated them. So I always wore like braids or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love being such a show off in front of the camera when I was a child. Your pose, like, I just, I feel that extra vibe from your um, choreography on this being routine specific, yeah. right? Where you're just like, boom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's so cute. It is, it's precious and also very impressive for um, like a seven-year-old. <laughs> right? I think I did gymnastics uh, or I did do gymnastics at this age. And yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's wrong. Wrong way. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay. Now was this, this was your, this was the silver medal routine, correct? Yes, it was. Okay, now I didn't know that this was one critiquing your beam. <laughs> that's okay I've, i i think i know all the critiques from it already i couldn't um i couldn't find like another one of these um i only found like qualifications and team finals and stuff so. right my favorite part is you can see my eyes widen right before my saturday layout layout they like zoom into my face <laughs> <laughs> so I also put the wrong age. They said I was 15. <laughs> it's okay. That's fine. And you were you were 16, right? Yeah. Okay. And you went, and I think after you went, you were still you had the top score, and then I think. Um, Ting Ting went like later on, or she was like the last one, correct? Yeah, she was last. Oh, see that smile? I just like knew I was gonna hit it at that point. <laughs> oh, I love the little hip shake and turn around. I know. <laughs> Lack of complex choreography. I don't know, it's pretty complex to me, but um, I'm not a gymnastics judge, so I'm just <laughs> Leave that one alone. That's okay. <laughs> okay, let's Aww. see. That was awesome. <laughs> that was cute. It always gives me chills, especially when I listen to it like full volume and I can hear like all the girls cheering in the background. I just like feel like I'm there again. I'm like, oh, so cute. Um, actually, okay, I'm gonna actually reshare my screen for just one more second because I did pull yes. up something else from um from that day on Twitter. Okay. Oh, that is my nice. I love it. Yay! I don't even know what Shallon is saying at the oh beginning, but lucky. Yay! Show me your medal. Oh my is that Shallon? Is it is Shallon. Yes. Yeah. I don't even know what that lucky. <laughs> you sounded like she was like you be go lucky? I yes, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I've watched it so many times. <laughs> Dude, you just look so happy. Like, I mean, I know. when you went into that just, final, I mean, what were you thinking? Like, you just wanted to hit it. Like, a lot of times it's just like, you know, just want to hit a good routine. And then obviously if you do your job, then like, you're obviously in contention for a medal or if not gold. But like, 
what was that experience like um oh gosh okay well in team finals I guess I put like a lot of pressure on myself to like want to stick to my routines and of course I fell on the two events that I was doing I fell on guards and on beam and I haven't fallen on those in like forever Mm -hmm. um so then after that competition I was like I kind of want to get a little bit of revenge for beam finals I had no idea where I was going to place and I knew there were so many good competitors um in the final Mm -hmm. and so because we were in the separate gym before um like walking out right before competing um I didn't know like anything that was going on like I didn't see how Simone did I didn't see how I don't remember who else I just remember Simone because she went first um so I didn't know any of the scores. Um, that's why I like that pure emotion. As soon as I landed that double pike, it was just me being happy that I finally hit a routine yeah. and I knew that I would be happy with it no matter what the outcome is. Um, and then when I saw like my score go higher than Simone's, I was like, no way. <laughs> like, what the heck? Um, so, and then, but then when... Uh, Ting Ting went and she had the most gorgeous beam routine and I was like okay if she doesn't beat me then like this is not fair um, <laughs> so it was gorgeous and then we were both so happy when like I went to go congratulate her there's like one cute picture that person sent me a while ago on the internet both of us like <laughs> like it was so cute um yeah. yeah I mean what was it like to be on that podium with uh, Ting Ting and Simone like I feel like they're just like those like incredible beam workers and in different yeah. regards like y'all have different styles I feel like on beam um yeah and that, that must have been awesome it was crazy I didn't know where to look there were so many like cameras I was like do I find my team and try to like look at them I didn't know where to look and I was just like so happy <laughs> <laughs> that's an awesome moment where do you keep your world medal now I know some people like hide them away almost but like do you just look yours um my parents are have like a little like my mom framed my suit Mm -hmm. um with like my medal in it and a little kind of plaque that gymnastics Canada gave us um so they're keeping that in their room right now but there's a little like Anna shrine in our hallway upstairs (laughs) with like many medals and trophies throughout the years (laughs) so awesome As far as there are some that ask about 2024, but I think we've already gotten to the point of like, you might continue training um, at UCLA and decide to maybe 2024, which is only three years away, correct? I know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, So what, um, what's your favorite event? And then what do you plan to major in while at UCLA? My favorite event, um, to compete, definitely floor, mm. um, to train, it just depends on the day, whatever yeah. event likes me as well. <laughs> <laughs> and at the moment, I'm majoring in human biology. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what specifics yet, but I have until end of second year. And okay, so, we'll see so what would you do with human biology? Like, I know my sister uh, majored in biology for undergrad, and then she's going to vet school. So would you look at like med school? Or is that just like biology and you go into, I don't know what the field would be like, but there are so many things I've been thinking about lately. Like, at one point, I had my heart set on biomedical engineering. Mm-hmm. And um, I like went into further research into neural engineering. It was so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after my surgery, I was like, being a surgeon is like the coolest thing ever as well. <laughs> um, and then I was like, but then wouldn't it be so cool to work with athletes on like an NCAA team, yeah. whether it was like as a physio or something. I don't know why it's been like this. So I just, I'll probably have to do some like internships and stuff at university yeah. and see what I like best. Yeah, but that's cool. You you know, you know, kind of the general field and then you can figure out what is your path where your passions lie what I was going to say on the favorite event is that I feel like you know obviously you do so well on beam but I feel like a lot of people would just like assume that beam is your favorite but um that's not always the case even if you obviously shine on certain events correct yeah that's true that's true like I think my best floor team that's 
kind of ever been posted was the 2019 World Cup Mm because that's really the only yeah I don't really know but um I had so much fun with that routine and that was the first time the audience ever clapped to my routine I was like I've always wanted that and I was so happy in the middle of my routine it was like 10,000 fans just clapping along I was like this is amazing so I love it when fans do that I feel like um Allie Raisman's um, Olympic year floor routine, I think just for floor routines in general, like they kind of built in clapping, but like you wanted to clap along as well. And yeah. So, I feel like that's so powerful. Like that really, it builds people up. Like you just get it really does. rush in the middle when, you know, you might be like tired or um, worried, just kind of like, it's very motivating. Exactly. <laughs> what, um, what new skills if any, will you throw this year? Obviously you're nursing that injury, but what new skills are you looking at? Um, I guess I haven't really thought of that just yet. I'm kind of just still working on getting my old skills back. Um, yeah. So I don't know if anything comes up, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite memory in the sport? Favorite memory. Uh, I loved Okay, this is going to be like non gym related because I feel like I could say 2018 Worlds or whatever because, of course. Um, but when we went to Doha, we went camel riding and then right after they took us into the sand dunes and there were these crazy drivers that took us around the hills. <laughs> And like, there were like two cars and we were like this close to each other. We were just kind of going down yeah. a hill. Yeah. yeah. And I've never experienced anything like that. So that was amazing. I actually did that as well. The dune bashing or whatever. We did that yeah. like same excursion um, when I was in Doha. And I can attest that that was wild. I thought we yeah. were going to the car. I right? I was die. Yeah. It was it was crazy, but it's so worth it. Like that was amazing. Something <laughs> you don't know in foreign countries how those excursions are going to go. Yeah. But that was one that's like, if you go to Qatar, I don't know, Qatar, Qatar, um, if you go to Doha, do that. <laughs> um, exactly. Are you fully recovered from your surgery? And somebody said, love you. That's why I wanted to mention, but. Aw, so- I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you speak, you speak Romanian, correct? I do. I actually learned Romanian before I learned English. So I went to kindergarten not knowing any English. That's wild. So you know Romanian, and then I believe, do you know French? Is that? Quite a bit, yeah. yeah. I went to French immersion in elementary school. So. Okay. Yeah, because I know um, in Canada, French is also one of the other languages. There's a lot of languages in Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's really cool that you knew Romanian before you knew English. Um now, I know your parents came over from Romania. Somebody actually asked, um, and I don't know if you would ever, I don't know if you actually would be like eligible to com- compete for Romania, but somebody asked, would you compete for Romania? I've been asked so many times by the coaches. Um, I do have dual citizenship, okay. so I technically could, mm-hmm. um, but I do think my heart is set on Canada. Yeah. For now. <laughs> um. Let's see, one more. Um, tips to improve quickly. It's an interesting improve question. Quickly. Um, I guess my best way, if you want to improve consistency, I just put in a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a little instance. For a few years, um, I would get up on a beam during like podium training or whatever, right before competition. And it would look like I didn't step on a beam for a year. I would be all over the place. I wouldn't be able to stick anything. Yeah. And then until my coach is like, you're going to do five in a row aerial layouts (laughs) before you finish. And until I stuck those five in a row, I was a mess. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes on days off, like if I didn't get enough training due to injury or whatever, um, I would come in and just stick like 15 aerial layouts. but that was like the only way I was able to get ready for a competition in like two, three weeks time. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> that was also when I also had like a younger body that could handle all that. Speaking of body, not like body in general, but like um, I did read that you grew a lot 
um, between like 2018 and 2019? Did you curl like two inches? Um, so I just hit five feet kind of end of 2018. So when I was 16 and now I'm like five, two and a half. Wow. (laughs) I know you, I know you were dealing with some injuries between like, say like after Doha and, um, throughout like 2019 and stuff. So like, was it like, do you think it was like the time off that like your body just like changed and grew quite a bit? It It definitely did. Um, because I was supposed to go to 2019 Pan Ams, mm-hmm. but then I also, I injured my ankle again right before, at, like, at the training camp, so yeah. I think that time off was when I really kind of sprouted. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, that you said that that's actually, like, I don't know how much, but that, like, mainly, like, impacted, it actually did impact just a couple of inches, impacted your bars, is that correct? Yeah, um, well, as you know, I used to do, like, every single skill from stoop, Mm -hmm. um, so that was a really big struggle, even going into 2019 Worlds, right after that time off, and then, um, even by 2020 Elite Canada, I switched over to Stalder for everything, (laughs) oh, that skill, I didn't realize how hard it was. (laughs) Yeah, like two and a half inches, like it seems like nothing, but for a gymnast, that's huge. And then you have to like adjust for that and everything. And it's, that's crazy. I mean, I, I, you hear about people going through growth spurts, I guess, throughout their gymnastics careers, but the fact that it happened like so quickly to you I know. Um, in that time off, that's wild. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. But I've always been so sensitive to like the smallest little changes. Like I would have a day off and I'd be able to do uh, a skill like perfectly fine. And then after that day off, um, it would just be so off. And I just have to put in like rework the skill again to feel it. And um, ever since I was a child, um, I would just slip off the bar whenever I grew. I grew like the tiniest little bit and I just like ping off. It was so cute. (laughs) That's wild. That, like just like the little bit of change in your height mm-hmm. just impacts it so much where like you might not even necessarily register it, like maybe like subconsciously, but like consciously no. you not register it, but then like it happens like that and yeah, I could <laughs> that's I know. crazy. It's, it's been a long road. <laughs> Have you um you said that you've grown two and a half inches now for up to your five oh at um, 2018 worlds and now you're five two and a half do you think you're going to grow any more like does the doctor say like uh you're not done growing um see when I first fractured my foot in 2018 and I got like all my CT scans in and whatnot um they're like oh your growth plates are almost closed so you probably won't grow much so I don't really know I don't think I'll grow too much more now but um yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> now you're kind of like tall in gymnast standards. <laughs> um, I guess like I'm taller than Ellie now. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm t- I, I know. Um, for, again, for gymnast standards, people think people see y'all like, you know, on TV and in these meets and stuff. And like, you see the difference say between like, um, like you and Simone and like, I think Simone's under five foot, um, yeah. like four foot eight. No, no, not four foot eight. Maybe like four foot ten. <laughs> I don't know. That's really <laughs> short. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. Simone's tiny, obviously. Um, but um, people like see the comparison and then you see gymnasts in person and you're just like, everybody. They're so short. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. You think on TV that they're like, you might think that Ellie is like close, like pushing like six foot or something. <laughs> like compared because all of you are tiny. So like yeah, that's true. Our frame of reference, and then you see them in person, and you're just like, nope. Everybody. I know <laughs> it's crazy. I remember in the hotel that we were at at 2019 Worlds, um, I think we were at breakfast or something, and this whole team of basketball players walk in that are probably like seven feet tall. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> oh that's crazy I love seeing the photos like especially at the Olympics when you see like I don't know obviously like the U.S. gymnasts I've seen with like maybe like Simone next to I don't know I'm making people up maybe Shaq yeah yeah. like that and you're just like oh my god I'm gonna see if I can find a photo 
uh, me between two volleyball players. Oh. <laughs> I met them, was it last year? I think it was last year, yes. I might have it in my camera roll. Okay. I don't know. Oh, you can't oh. really see, but. Oh. <laughs> Are those female volleyball players? Yeah. Oh my god they are like <laughs> a he- a, a, two to three feet like heads taller than you <laughs> i know and they had like a bit they had split stances they weren't even they, did. <laughs> <laughs> they were like you know just like kind of doing one of these like hello <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that's wild sometimes I feel like I'm short and I'm like five foot three and a half I'm solid on the the half I always mention that the doctor doctor will be like oh you're like five foot three and I'm like no I'm five foot three and a half thank you thank you very much (laughs) meanwhile my siblings are like I have one sibling that is like five ten that I'm the oldest of three siblings and my (laughs) sister is like five nine ish maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe I just think she's super tall but she's definitely much taller than me (laughs) And then my brother is 10 years younger than me, um, but he's already surpassed me. And I'm sure he's going to be like yeah. six foot plus. And it's just like, it's so interesting wow. being a tiny person in the family. <laughs> I know. Um, and my husband's like a literal head taller than me. So it's just. That's adorable though. That's like a perfect relationship height. <laughs> yeah. At our wedding, um, last summer we got married and like, I was like. <laughs> in our dance because you know you formal dance and we don't have yeah dance. but I was just like in the photos you don't really think about it when you're in the moment but in the photos right. I literally like poor like, neck <laughs> a giraffe like a giraffe neck yeah I'm just like this is very attractive I'm <laughs> love it. great positive experience or moment or piece of advice or something that has really like stuck with you um that, you know, you think about a lot and that, um, you know, puts a smile on your face or drives you or something like that. And I know it's a question you can think on for a minute if you want. Um, actually, I know exactly what I'm going to say because the girls at the gym always tell me about it. So I'm really good at giving advice mm-hmm. and like motivating people and giving pep talks, um, but not so much when it comes to myself. Mm-hmm. So then I had a friend tell me, Actually, I think it was when I was in Halifax. And they're like, you have to listen to your own advice. And I was like, you like kind of have a point. <laughs> and that's kind of stuck with me a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? If I was my friend, what would I say to myself? Like, I wouldn't tell myself, oh, that was a bad turn. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that, you know? Yeah. Like, good for you for trying or something like that. Um, so that's, I think that's definitely been helping me a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that makes sense. Like, I feel like as humans, we are, have a tendency to, you know, give advice. And a lot of times it's great advice. Um, <laughs> then it's hard for us to like listen to our, or we don't think about listening to our own advice. Cause it's like, as humans, I feel like we think that we should like, oh yeah, we're already doing that. Like, but right. you have to actually turn it on yourself and be like, you know, what would I do? What would um, Anna do? Or Exactly. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with me for a little bit. And I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> no problem. It was fun to talk and catch up. And I hope that you continue to recover um with the ankle and um fingers crossed we will I've actually been to be honest I've been trying to hide my one (laughs) I didn't even notice so you're good um this is but fingers crossed we will um get to everything will go well and you'll recover and um we'll have Olympic trial you'll have Olympic trials and things will go well and Tokyo will happen and you'll be in BM finals, um, <laughs> add to your collection. Um, Aww. and yeah. And no matter what, obviously everybody is looking forward to seeing you at UCLA next year and for many years to come. <laughs> so. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure lot, talking to you too. Yeah. A lot to look forward to. Um, and we're excited to continue following your career. So <laughs> thank you. I All appreciate right. it. All right. Well, Have a great day. Enjoy. I don't know if you finished your tea, but enjoy the rest of your tea. Almost.
<laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. All right. Bye. bye.